What's going on YouTube? This is SG1 Sports and we're going to give you our projected records for the SEC based off of all the projected records we have done. If you've missed it, we've gone through all the Power 5 teams, previewed the schedules, and then given a projected record based off of really how tough that schedule is and how good each team is expected to be. These are not our official predictions. Our predictions will look different. We do this every year and they always are different, but it's simply a projection Again, based off of how good most people think these teams are going to be and then putting that up against how tough their schedule is. So let's get started with the SEC East. We've got Vanderbilt at the bottom going 5-7, and 2-6 and six in the conference. Uh, another thing here, we did our projections based off of the overall record and then I just kind of went in and, and made it work with the conference record. So uh, you're going to see really based this more off of the overall record but i did make it to how it would fit in a way uh where we can do the the actual conference standing so that's why i do have the conference record but there were not there was not a projection based off of of the conference games the projection was based off of all 12 games and then i again i just kind of made it work with the conference game so florida ahead of them at six and six overall three and five in the sec and again, I broke all of this down for every team. We did every single Power 5 team. So if you're wondering, well, how did Florida wind up at 6-6? Six and six? You can go watch that Florida video and see exactly uh, why that is their projected record. Ahead of them is Missouri. Uh, so if there was a tie, I just went with whoever played at, at plays at home in that matchup. So Missouri gets Florida at home. That's why they're ahead of them here in the standings. Uh, but again, both teams six and six, both teams losing a non-conference game. You know, that means Florida would split with Utah and Florida State. If they lose both of those games, then obviously that's going to make them four and four in the conference if they go six and six. So again, it's all based off of the overall, but I wanted to put this into uh, into actual standings with those conference records. Kentucky also three and five in the conference, but seven and five overall. A better overall record that's why i put them ahead of missouri and florida uh, but again three and five for them in the uh, sec pretty easy non-conference schedule for the wildcats this year south carolina at four and four in the conference seven and five overall of course they've got north carolina and clemson uh, so our projection had them if you want to break it down into the conference record had them splitting those two games and then going four and four in the sec tennessee's projection at nine and three a five and three would be their conference record. Uh, they've got a pretty tough schedule, of course, having to play Alabama out of the West, and they do go on the road for that matchup, so that'll be a tough one. And then at number one, Georgia, eight and 12 and 0 overall. Uh, the only game that was not really considered a win for them was Tennessee, but they were favored in that game, so that rounded it up to 12 and 0. So Georgia expected to go undefeated. Then Tennessee at nine and three, but every team but Vanderbilt here in the SEC East is projected to go to a bowl game. I would I would say that Missouri or Florida, one of those teams, probably winds up at five and seven, just because that's how it normally goes. You're not going to have that many teams bowl eligible, and these projections were done really conservatively. So some teams are going to obviously overperform and underperform. And if I had to guess, I would say that a couple of teams. Um, at least overall in the SEC, we'll probably miss a bowl game this upcoming season.